before Christmas I got a package. It contains this small module that should be capable of transmitting sensor data to a LoRa satellite and last for a few months with this battery. After my last experience with FOSSASAT-1, I'm skeptical. Do you want to accompany me on the journey? Ritzy YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. We all were disappointed when FOSSASAT-1 did not work. I would have loved to transfer LoRa messages from a $20 sensor node by a satellite to my computer before the turn of the decade. FOSSASAT-1 showed that many problems have to be solved before we can transfer a message via satellite. But let's have a quick look at who sent me this package. This is the team of Lacuna, a startup based in the UK. Many of the LoRa veterans know Thomas from his contributions to LoRa and his presentations at LoRa conventions. Rob is a space veteran and knows how to put stuff into the orbit. Both co-founders were able to get the right partners for such a risky endeavor. The European Space Agency and Semtech, the producer of the LoRa chips. Their goal is to make it simple to place sensors wherever you need them. The main difference between Lacuna and Fossa system is that Lacuna has to make money in the end. Even their service may not be used by many makers, we can learn a lot, because all their soft and hardware is open source. But which problems do we have to overcome to send messages via satellite? The first one is the selection of the frequency used by the nodes on Earth. If you use the ISM band, no license is necessary and everybody can easily build their own node and use it. On the other hand, ISM bands are heavily used. This is no problem for our sensors or gateways. Because the line of sight is very limited, usually they only can receive signals from a few hundred meters distance. For a satellite, this is completely different. It has a footprint of thousands of kilometers or miles. This means that it has a line of sight to most of the devices inside this footprint and it hears every signal with enough power to reach it. And it is hard to filter the LoRa signals of our small boards here on Earth. Very bad. This is why Lacuna chose the 868 or 915 MHz ISM bands, which seem to be less crowded than the 430 MHz band used by FOSSA systems. And the antennas on 868 MHz are also smaller. As we all know, LoRa nodes have to be very low power and should sleep as long as possible. As we have seen in the video about FOSSASAT, these small satellites move very fast. The advantage? You can cover nearly the whole world with one satellite, which passes at least once each day. But it is only visible for a few minutes. If we want to sleep the node as long as possible, it has to know when the satellite is visible the next time. Because it only has to wake up for the pass. How can this be done? But first, let's have a look at what I got. As Dave Jones from EEV blog would say, let's take it apart. First, we see a device and a Lion battery in a waterproof box. If we have a closer look at the device, we see an antenna plus a ground plane. The antenna has a circular polarization and if we remove it, we see a LoRa module with a new SX1262 chip a U-Blox GPS receiver with a ridiculously small antenna, an STM MPU and some additional chips. One of those chips is important, the ATECC608A secure element. It can be used for encryption, but I also assume for license management. So it will not be easy to hack these devices. What is the purpose of a GPS chip on board? Let's put it together and fire it up. But of course, not before we tested the antenna. It has a very good performance between 868 and 915 MHz. Important if we want to reach space with a few milliwatt power. I use the fully automated sketch for my test. If we have a look at serial monitor, 
we see why it needs its GPS receiver. It acquires exact time and position, and with this information and the flight data of the satellite, the device is capable of calculating the next path with high precision. If you are interested in this topic, maybe you watch video number 302. As soon as it calculated the next path, it sets a wake-up alarm and starts to sleep. Like the LabCat Dishka, this device also sleeps the whole day to save energy. Now I can put the device to the roof and do something different till the satellite pass in the evening. I keep the laptop connected to see if something happens. Because the satellite acts as an ordinary TTN gateway, I can set up my node as a device in the TTN console. If everything goes right, the messages will be collected and stored by the satellite if no ground station is available. As soon as one is in its footprint, it starts to download the messages and the ground station transfers them to TTN. It's now later in the afternoon. I just want to check everything. What is this? I already got messages from my node? This is impossible. The next satellite pass is only in the evening. Let's check which gateway received the message. Aha! A well-known number. No satellite. It is my own gateway. Of course, the satellite node is in its reach. So the clever bugger sends its messages through gateways if available. Like my smartphone, which connects to the free of charge Wi-Fi to save on the mobile plan. So back to other work. Now it is already evening. Let's check the satellite node plus the laptop on the roof. Fortunately, it does not rain. You saw it is really bad weather. You know from your GPS systems that clouds are not good for radio waves to space. Will it work? At least the elevation of the next satellite pass should be high, so the distance to the satellite is short and may be offset the harsh weather conditions. Now it's around 9.55 pm and I'm keyed up. I hope it will work. The satellite should be visible now, right above me. Unfortunately, nothing happens. The serial connection shows that the node sleeps like a teenager who should go to school in the morning. The TTN console also does not show a message, which is okay. But the serial of the node should show at least a trial to do something. Very disappointing. And now it even started to rain. Hopefully my PC did not get too wet. The node should be rather waterproof. Again, a disappointment. This time I hoped the professional team would be able to develop at least a working system. Obviously, it's too complicated to build such a system. Or LoRa is not the right technology for that. Let's mail Thomas the facts. I hope he is not too disappointed, because he helped me during his holidays. But what does he write back? He saw messages from me coming from the satellite? Great! It worked! Incredible! They are just stuck somewhere between the ground station and my TTN console. So I have to wait a few minutes to see if it's true. And Thomas also wrote what happened. The serial connection sometimes does not wake up correctly and does not work. But obviously the node woke up and transferred its message. And now I got more messages. Let's check the gateway. This message again came through my gateway. Because I wanted to understand the code, I took the note down to my lab and connected it to my PC. Then it sent a message from there. But the message before? The gateway part looks different. This is definitely not my gateway. It is the satellite. It does not show RSSI or signal to noise ratio. But it shows the values measured by my node. Close to 10 degrees centigrade and high humidity. These are the values from the roof. I'm so happy that I got the first message via satellite. With all that happens now, the next decade definitely will be a decade of space invasion. Like the 1960s. And I am part of it. Transmitting messages with a $20 note every maker can build because Lacuna will provide the code as well as the diagrams with an open source license. 
The only thing they need is a little money for each message transferred by the satellite. We now have the proof that LoRa satellites work. If Julian's FOSSASAT 2 is successful, we even will be able to transfer our messages free of charge. Summarized, we should be clear. The satellites of Julian and Lacuna are different animals that use the same technology to transfer messages. To get enough capacity, for example, Lacuna is capable of receiving many nodes in parallel. FOSSASAT 1 only has one channel. And for the moment, you need an amateur license to use FOSSASAT. This is not the case for Lacuna. But they delivered the proof that LoRa technology can be used to build cheap nodes and transfer messages via satellites. For the moment, the Lacuna satellite still is in a test phase. I'm sure we will hear when this will change. In the meantime, I wish you a happy 2020. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.